In this video, we're going to be doing an unboxing and review of the new Braun waterproof rechargeable LED spotlight that's now available at Harbor Freight. Now, I already own a couple of their slim bar folding LED lights, and I picked up one of their rechargeable 3-in-1 quick connect light kits as you see here and I've been very happy with their performance and impressed with how well they've worked so when this new light came out I was really excited to get my hands on one so we can put it through a torture test and see how well this light actually performs. Hey everyone, welcome to Javo's Garage. Here I do how-to car repair videos, I do garage projects, and I do tool reviews, but with a focus on providing you with the in-depth details that you normally won't find anywhere else. So if you're new here, please consider subscribing. Let's get started with our unboxing and review of our new Braun Waterproof Spotlight from Harbor Freight. Before we actually take our light out of the packaging, I thought it would be a good idea for us to go over some of the features that they have listed on the outside of the packaging. Now up here in the top right hand corner, it has the part number of your light and it's 64757. Over here it mentions it has a multi-position stand. It uses a rechargeable lithium ion battery. It has an impact resistant lens and housing. It has a easy grip handle and it has a waterproof housing that's IP67 rated. Now on the IP67 rating, the IP stands for ingress protection and the six and seven that follow it are two different ratings. The number six relates to the protection against solids and the ratings that are available there are from one to six so it has the highest rating on that so it is rated to keep dust and, and larger particles and even some of your fine particles out and on the seven that has to deal with your liquids protection and there are up to eight on the ratings there and so this is a seven out of eight and so with an IP67 rating, what that basically means in the end is that it's protected against dust and it can be submerged in water or a liquid um, up to about three meters or shall we say three feet um, for up to 30 minutes. And we're definitely going to try that out and make sure it actually withstands that. Now here it also mentions it has a rugged housing for extreme conditions. And I plan on doing some drop tests with our light here. And we're going to see how well it does uh, with its being handled roughly and being used in a real world scenario. Now over here it mentions the waterproof rechargeable LED spotlight and that it has a 400 lumens rating. Now if we flip it over to the back side, on the lower right hand corner here it mentions that in the low setting it's rated at 250 lumens and it should run for about 4 hours and 30 minutes on a full charge. In our high setting, it's rated at 400 lumens and it should run for about 2 hours and 30 minutes. Now up here, some of the features on this side it mentions, it has a multi-position stand that's located right here. It has the USB cable included and it's in the cap that's on the rear of our light back here. It mentions over here that it has the waterproof housing that's IP67 rated. It mentions the ultra bright LED that has low and high modes and the impact resistant lens and housing as well as our cushion grip with a trigger lock. Now here is where our instructions are located for your light and once again your part number is listed down here and that covers everything on the outside of the box. Let's get started with getting it out of our packaging and let's start playing with this and see how well it works. So now that we have our light out of our packaging, here we have our owner's manual. And sometimes these can be a bit hard to read. However, this one has large print, so I think you'll find it easy to go through and navigate it and learn the instructions for your new light. However, I will put a link down below in the description to the PDF format on Harbor Freight's website that you can get the manual there. Now over here, now we have our light and up here you see we have our adjustable hanger or stand and basically with this it has positive locks if you will in these different areas right here so it's not a flimsy lock and what that gives you the ability to do is actually to be able to set the light if you will like this and you can set it at different angles 
to adjust whatever it is that you're working on. And it does hold firm in those. It's not a flimsy lock. It actually has a positive catch in there. There are stops on there, so it will keep it in place. And when you're not using it, you can set it there. Naturally, this back lens here, the back cover is flat. So if you needed to and you wanted to use it as, let's say, a light up inside of a tent aiming upwards, you can just set it on its back like this and use it that way. It does here on the back have a wrist strap. So if you want to, you can put your hand through that and then hold your light like so. Um, up here we have our trigger or our on and off switch. And if we flip it to this side, um, over here you see we have the lock switch. And I believe at this point in time, it is in the off position as it is now. And so if you press it down, that puts it in the lock position. So if you throw it in your backpack or in your glove compartment or your toolbox, once it's down, it's in the locked position and then you can't accidentally turn on the light and run your battery down. To turn that off, you'll just click that light up and then once again, now you can just go through and just press your buttons and that activates your light. So if we go to the back side here, this here is the housing that will have your USB cable as well as your charging port. And you just turn this counterclockwise to the left. And when we remove that back here, you'll see here is our USB cable that is included. We have our USB port that's located right here. And then it has an LED indicator located here on the back that will tell you when it is charging and when it is fully charged. Naturally, as it's charging, it's going to be red. And when it is fully charged, that light will turn green. What I do really like is the fact they include the cable, but not only that, but they include a place to actually store the cable in the light so I don't have to walk around looking for a cable to be able to plug my light in and charge it. If we look around here, you'll see it's got an O-ring that's in here. And once again, that's what gives it that IP67 rating with this O-ring. That'll keep your dust out and keep your moisture out of your housing. We can undo our housing here and basically we'll just thread this off counterclockwise, kind of like we do here on the back side. Now as we do this, once again, you can see right here it has an O-ring seal that's up in here and I just thought we'd take this out a little bit. You can see here's our LED light that's in here. You have your PCB or printed circuit board in there and I'm not going to get into taking it apart much more than that. We don't need to. I just thought I'd let you see what you have involved here and that it is sealed both front and back. Now this front housing cover right here has a rubber coating on it. The whole thing actually has like a rubbery feel if you will. Now this main body is plastic but this here is a rubber rubber feel to it as well as your grip and basically now what you'll do is once you get that put on you'll tighten that back down good and firm so that way you have that seal back in there to keep your moisture out it does have these little openings here along the top so if you wanted to maybe add another wrist strap or maybe put a, a hook in there so that you could hang it you would have that option available for you on it and uh, that pretty much wraps up what we have here on the outside. It is a nice firm housing. While we were doing this, I was also kind of curious just to get some rough measurements of it. And the overall length from, let's say, the very top of our light down to the bottom of our handle is going to be about six and a half inches in terms of its height. And now if we look here in length, it's gonna be about six inches from end to end here as well. Now the di diameter of the light housing itself is going to be about three inches in diameter. So it's pretty compact. This is something that could easily fit in a glove box, at least in my truck. But once again, I drive a truck, so it has a bigger glove box. But you could fit this inside your backpack, inside your truck uh, toolbox. Um, there are many places that you can put something like this and it is really rugged. I do like the housing here. It has like a pistol grip housing that makes it really comfortable to hold in your hand. Now to activate our light, we have our trigger that's located right here. And basically if you tap it once, you're in high mode, tap it again, you're in low mode, and then tap it a third time and it will go into a flashing mode as you see here. And that is a SOS mode. So if you're in distress, you can actually use this to call for help. 
Now they call it a flashing mode in here, but I do believe this is an SOS signal. So it, this is something like for your boat or if you have a stranded car, something like that, or you're up camping, this is something that'll send out a distress signal to those who would possibly be searching for you or to cars passing by. And then we'll press that once again, and that turns it off. Now, once again, don't forget, we also have our safety switch here. So you can just press that in the down position and then your trigger will not activate the light. Now the battery they use in the new spotlight is the same battery that they use in the slim bar folding LED light. And that is a type 18650 battery and it has a 2200 milliamp rating. Now I'm a little bit disappointed in that. I wish they had gone with the battery that's in the 3-in-1 quick connect light kit that I have here because this is also a type 18650 however this is a 2600 milliamp battery so I wish they would have gone with this battery as opposed to this one however should you want to change out your battery or do an upgrade with it all you have to do is remove the rear cap of your light You'll remove the cable that comes included. And down inside this housing here, you're gonna have two Phillips head screws. And once you remove those from the panel, that will give you access to be able to change out your battery. Now, once you're done with that, all you do is you'll put the panel back in, tighten your two screws down. You'll go ahead and reinsert your cable back into the back of the housing. And then you can go ahead and put your cap back on. Make sure that you get it on good and tight again so that you maintain that waterproof rating. So this is our light so far. I really like everything. The wrist strap that it comes with is real sturdy. It's not some cheap little flimsy strap that's on there. It's a nice strap. The handle is nice and sturdy. Um, I like the feel of the whole thing. It feels good in my hand and yet it's lightweight. I do believe the weight rating on this, if I'm not mistaken, is just a little bit under one pound and I could definitely see that. It's very lightweight so it wouldn't take up a lot of weight as you carry it in your backpack or uh, even on your side if you were to take it with you on a hike. And so this is gonna be a great light to add to your collection. But before we jump to that conclusion, let's start with doing some different testing of it in terms of how bright the light's gonna be. We're gonna test it for water and we're gonna do some drop testing. We're back out in the garage again, and we're just gonna do some up close testing here of our light. Now my toolboxes here are about 18 to 20 feet away from me. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and shut off our lights and we're gonna turn on our beam. So this here is our high beam mode. And as you can see here, it, it definitely lights things up very well and it completely lights up our toolbox. Now you could see where you could also take this and use this, for example, if it was pointing down to light up a work area. And once again, I can also take my handle and I could set it to where it was sitting like this. And now I could come and do some work or change out a spare tire, something like that if need be. And then here we are again with our light but it's extremely bright and it puts out a great beam here at about, let's call it 15 to the 20 feet area. Right in here, we're probably about 16. If we shoot like over into this area in here, we're at about 20 feet away over in there. And it's certainly bright to be able to use for this type of scenario. Now let's go to our low setting. And since we've had the light on, what you'll have to do is tap it twice and it's gonna shut off and then we'll go once again to high mode and then once again to low mode. So there's high and now there's low. So you can see low mode is not quite as bright naturally. It doesn't quite reflect so much for my camera to pick up on, but still certainly quite bright and would do very well in this scenario, especially at the price point that they offer this light at. Now let's try our strobe or the flashing scenario here, or our SOS, if you will.
That concludes that part of the test of our light. Now I'm anxious to actually do a drop test and let's see how well our light does being dropped from different heights. So here we go with some real world scenario dropping of our light. Now in this case I'm going to have the light set to the high position and we're going to start with our first drop is going to be at about two feet and I have my tape measure and this here is two feet. So if you're up working and you dropped your light, let's see how well it would do. And our light has held up. Our lens looks good. We have no marks on our lens and everything looks good there. So next up, we're gonna go to four feet and we're using our light and we just now dropped our light. And as you can see, the light is still working. Very impressive. I see no marks on the housing. And our glass and our lens looks great. So now comes the ultimate test. And this is at six feet that we're gonna drop our light from. And this here is gonna be about the max we're gonna test on it because it is kind of what it is here. But we have our light is on and here we are, our test drop it and my, there we go. And so we are now at six feet and here we go. So at six feet, as you can see, our light's still working. And so that's really impressive. Now, just to give it that extra torture test, I'm gonna do one more drop from six feet. And if it's still working, I would say that this has a really good durability. So here we are again at six feet. And once again, our light works. So you can drop this from a ladder while you're working or if you're up in a ladder in a tree or who knows what the heck you could be doing with it. But no matter what you're doing, you can certainly drop this light from a higher um, elevation, if you will, and it's still going to work. And as you can see here, all my functions are still working properly on it. And the good news is we haven't done the water test on it yet. So I thought it would be great to do our drop test from these different heights. And now we're going to do the water test on it and see how well it holds up. This will be a good test because it's been dropped quite a bit now and it's going to be put under water and we're going to submerge it for 30 minutes and see how well it works. Now I have a tub of water here and I set my tablet out here with my stopwatch so we can actually turn that on and we're going to see how well this does after 30 minutes. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn my light on and I thought I would show you one of the neat features with this light is it also does float and basically as I drop that in the water, you can see now that it's floating, which is why you saw some water dripping off of it. First time I did this, I dropped it in the water and I realized it's just gonna float. And so what I'm gonna do is use actually one of my Harbor Freight wheel chocks here, and I'm gonna place that on the light so it holds the light down under the water so that the entire thing is actually submerged during our 30 minute test. So now our wheel chock is holding it underwater. So we're gonna go ahead and start the timer and begin our time lapse. So here we are out front. I thought we'd do a view here at night as you can easily tell. And I'll turn my beam on high and I'm gonna pan over here to the right. These here are some neighbor's vehicles as you can see right there. Those vehicles are probably 60, 70 feet away and it just completely lights those up. As we move and we go down over here, there's one of my other neighbor's vehicles over here and it just completely lights up that truck. It's once again, probably 75 feet away as well. And so as we move along, you can just see it just totally lights everything up and it reaches way down to the end of the street. And I can go quite a ways down and it continues to light things up. Now, as you can see, it's lighting up the stop sign that's down at the end of our street. Now we're the second house on our block 
from the end and that stop sign is about eight houses away now if i shine clear down at the end i don't know if you'll be able to see it but down two blocks away our street dead ends and there's a sign down there that is actually being illuminated with it and it does a great job so it has great spot beam capability you can see i'm lighting up some trees down here at that distance so it's got a great spot beam and it's able to actually project a beam quite a distance away so in the end, what do we think of our bronze spotlight here? Now, you know, quite frankly, I really like the light. I think it does really good. It puts out a good strong beam of light and it certainly lights up my work areas that I would need it to use for. And I appreciate that with it. I like the fact that it has the cable on board. And so when it's time to recharge it, all I got to do is remove the cap. The cable's right there. I can plug it in. I can recharge it. I like the stand that it comes with, so I'm able to actually use it, set it down on the ground. If I'm changing a flat tire on the side of the road, doing a project in the yard, it certainly has different capabilities that enables me to do that. It's got a good strong housing with it, and I like the fact that it's also compact in size. It makes it easy for me to throw this in the glove compartment, I can throw it in my toolbox, or it's something you can throw in a backpack to take it with you on the road. Now, the other thing I like about it is the fact that it actually floats. So it's something you could also take on your boat with you. And if you drop your flashlight in the lake there or your spotlight, it's not going to sink down to the bottom of the lake. You'll just reach in, grab it, and you know that it's going to hold up well in the water and it's going to continue to work. It held up really well in our torture test where we dropped it at two feet, four feet, and even twice at six feet and the light continued to work after that we immediately dropped it in some water and actually submerged it and let it sit for 30 minutes and as you can see the light's still working really well so all things considered i think this is a great light especially at the price point that they're offering it with at under 20 dollars, you can't go wrong now one of the things i'd like to see them improve with this light would be to use the battery that comes in the three-in-one light kit that's a 2600 milliamp battery as opposed to the battery that comes in the slim bar folding light that is, a, that is a 2200 milliamp battery so i would like to see them upgrade the battery on it i think it would give us some better performance with it overall but outside of that i find this to be a great light and once again for under 20 dollars, you're just not going to beat this deal so hey i hope this video has been helpful for you if it has do me a favor and hit that like button for me if you would it just lets youtube know that y'all appreciate my content if you'd like to see more videos like this one in the future hit that subscribe button and stick around here with me in the garage as always i appreciate you stopping by and thanks for watching.